Hey everyone and welcome back. Today we're shifting gears a bit and taking a deep dive into a world um, a world that honestly kind of feels like science fiction. It's true. And listeners, you're going to want to buckle up for this one because we are talking hypercars. Yeah, but not just any hypercar. This is the Koenigsegg 1.1. And like maybe you've heard of it, maybe you haven't. But either way, this deep dive comes from an episode of the podcast The Case. And they really break down what makes this thing so special. And they use the term mega car, which I think is appropriate because it goes beyond just supercar, you mm. know? Right. It's like next level. And one of the biggest things is this power to weight ratio. Yeah, it's a 1.1 ratio. So. so we're talking 300 and 341 horsepower. 1,341 horses packed into a car that weighs about as much as like your average SUV. <laughs> it's wild. Okay. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I can't even imagine like unleashing that kind of power, yeah. like just flooring it. How do you even begin to control something like that? Well, and that's where things get really interesting, I think, because to achieve that level of like performance, you have to really push the boundaries of what's possible with, well, pretty much everything, but especially the materials. Because you can't talk about the 1.1 without talking about carbon fiber. Right. Yeah. It's kind of a magic ingredient. But how does that, like, I know I don't really know much about carbon fiber other than it's really expensive. Well, it's lighter and stronger than steel, which is obviously super important when you're building a car this powerful and this light. But it also, it behaves very differently than metal, especially in a crash. Because I was going to say, the case actually talks about a pretty bad crash during some testing at the Nürburgring. Oh, yeah. Back in 2016, I think it was. Yeah. And what's interesting is that metal is going to, like, crumple, right, yeah. to absorb the impact during a crash. Right. Carbon fiber, on the other hand... Mm -hmm. It's more brittle, so it can handle a crazy amount of force, but there's a limit. And when you hit that limit, well... It breaks. It shatters. Shatter. See, now that to me sounds a lot scarier than crumpling. Well, because it's not your like typical car crash physics. You yeah. know, and this is where the whole mega car thing gets real. Because only seven of these cars exist. Oh, yeah. Each one costs between $2.8 and $3 million. So we're not even talking about if you get into a fender bender. What if this thing right. completely falls apart? It's going to be an expensive fix, potentially even totaling the car. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, what does the insurance on a car like that even look like? Right. And it gets even more complicated because we're talking about a car that can reach speeds most people can't even fathom. So it's not your average crash scenario. Yeah. And speaking of you're not your average, the podcast mentioned something that really caught my attention. They said there aren't like standardized crash tests for hypercars like this. It's true. Unlike regular cars, they don't have to go through those same rigorous crash tests. So nobody's strapping a crash test dummy into one of these and sending it into a wall at like 200 miles an hour. Not that I know of. Which means we don't really know for sure how they'd hold up in a real world crash. I mean, there are computer simulations and all that. But yeah, it's all theoretical until... Until it actually happens. Which, and let's be honest, part of the thrill of a car like this is that potential for danger. Oh, absolutely. It's like this untamed beast of a machine, you know? But it makes you wonder, are we maybe getting a little ahead of ourselves with all this technology, I mean? Right, like have we really thought through all the consequences? What happens if, God forbid, one of these is involved in a crash with another car? Or even, like, a pedestrian? I mean, it's a tough question, right? Because on the one hand, you have this incredible display of engineering, this marvel of what humans can create when they push the limits. But then on the other hand... There's this risk that's uh, unknown. Yeah. And it's not just about the driver, is it? It's about everyone else on the road, too. And the case really makes you think about who's responsible when things go wrong. Is it the engineers, mm. the manufacturer, the driver? Yeah, where do you even begin to draw the line? And this is what I find so interesting about this whole conversation. It goes way beyond just cars. You know, it makes you think about all the choices we make every day. Like what kind of risks are we willing to accept? And what are the potential costs? Not just financially, but, you know, ethically. Exactly. And how do we find that balance between embracing innovation and like not getting blinded by the shiny new thing? It's almost like, are we so obsessed with what we can do right. that we forget to ask if we should do it? And that brings us right back to the Koenigsegg 1.1, this incredible machine, this testament to human ingenuity, but also this kind of cautionary tale. It's both, isn't it? And it's it's a... exciting and terrifying all at the same time. It really is. And it forces us to ask ourselves some tough questions about, you know, where we're headed with all of this. Where's that line between pushing boundaries and like being reckless? It's that classic dilemma, right? 
Progress versus caution, innovation versus responsibility. Exactly. And the 1.1 sits right at that intersection, mm -hmm. a symbol of just how far we can push things, but also a reminder that there are always going to be risks. It kind of makes you think, what will this car's legacy be? You know, will it be the pinnacle of automotive achievement? Yeah. Or will it be that cautionary tale, that what we'll be thinking moment? And honestly, it might be a little bit of both. I think that's what makes it so fascinating to talk about. It's not a simple answer. Definitely not. So to our listeners, if you want to dive even deeper into this whole world of hypercars and carbon fiber and the ethics of speed, I highly recommend checking out the full episode of The Case. Yeah, they did a great job of presenting all sides of the story. Yeah, it's really well done. But for us, I think the big takeaway here is that the Koenigsegg 1.1 is more than just a car. It's a reflection of our own desires, you know, our fascination with pushing limits and the challenges that come with that. It's about asking ourselves those tough questions like, just because we can, does that mean we should? And I think that's a question we need to be asking ourselves more and more these days as technology keeps advancing, not just in the automotive world, but across the board. Absolutely. We have a responsibility to be aware of the potential consequences of our actions and to think critically about the future we're creating. So that's our deep dive into the incredible and slightly terrifying world of the Koenigsegg 1.1. It's a car that forces us to confront some really big questions about innovation, risk, and the limits of human ingenuity. And what a ride it's been. That's for sure. And to all our listeners, thank you for joining us on this journey. Keep those wheels turning, and we'll catch you on the next deep dive. Until then, drive safe, everyone.